Hello everybody, it is I, UngoCast. Sounds weird. Does it sound better with noise cancelling on? A little bit. A little bit. Hi there, true pro gamer. Are you a true pro gamer? Um, last... Okay, I don't... These pop-ups can... I don't... I don't need this pop-up. I don't... I, 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 I don't need this pop-up. Make this pop-up go away. Make this pop-up go away. Okay. I can't make the pop-up go away. I think it's because it's like really, 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 <laughs> really blown up. I can't see the whole thing. You moved to YouTube. Well, congratulations. I tried doing that at one point and I realized it, it, it wasn't, it wasn't in the cards for me. But, oh, well, I also have a new webcam position, which is incredible, because I got a new tripod. Shout out to that. A wonderful tax write-off, soon to be. What do you want, puppy? You want another treat? Bro, I've been giving you hella treats. You don't need any more. I've given her so many. She doesn't need any more. She's being um, criminally... Criminally... Okay, why isn't this... Okay, whatever. It doesn't want to rotate. And that's okay. That is okay. We'll just leave it right there. No, you're not getting any more treats. I'm sorry. You have some kibs in there. You hungry? Ah. See, the problem is it takes forever to get up and out of the seat, but whatever. Not really. Wow. <laughs> Five seconds. It takes forever. <laughs> Alright, I'm just gonna give the kids. We're gonna get groceries tomorrow. Tomorrow? We're gonna get groceries? When are we gonna get groceries? Maybe we'll get them tomorrow. I'm sure everyone's gonna wanna go out on Friday, so the grocery store is gonna be pretty empty. That's how I see things. Uh, but yeah, welcome, true pro gamer. I'm playing some Forza Horizon tonight. Uh, new weeklies. Uh, new event, new season, all of the above. Time to grind out a new weekly challenge set. It's starting me off in this uh, super race, which starts off with Alejandra talking about how she lost. Whoa! That was a bit of a... Okay, we're in fourth gear? What gear are we in? Three stars is 125. Well, if I knew what gear I was in, that would be nice. Also, sometimes the, the, the handbrake gets a little glitch and I have to pump it first. But it should be good now. No, 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 no. There we go. Okay, I need to get back in the groove of things. This needs to lean back more. It's a drag car. Yep, um, pretty much. So we're in the Super Mark IV, and we are here to go fast. Well, okay, so here's the thing. You can stay in your lane, Xander, or you can fuck off. Now I have to do... Oh, and then he... Okay. What? So he takes the more narrow driving line when I slow it down, but then if I try to overtake him, he takes the wide one. That's real clever. Oh my god. Oh my god. Right. Oh 
Why am I not shifting gears? Is it because I have it set to automatic? Curious. I also messed with my brake and acceleration sensitivity a little bit here. So that, uh... You and me, my friend. We're going to show everyone how it's done. Yes, boss? That, uh... <laughs> Now we're we're doing all right. Summer party. All right, let's go. Um Should be able to turn down my fan behind me. I mean, if it's not an issue, we'll leave it, but I just worry about my power usage in this house and so I don't want to use too much Okay, so this week we get the Ford Falcon. Let's go. Drive a 2015 Hellcat. Uh, Bugatti Minecraft theme. Dude, you look like El Minecraft, homie. Alright, alright. That's a fun way to start off the season. Driving a 2015 Welcome Dodge back. Challenger. That doesn't sound like fun. There it is, 2015. I only have one of them? That's crazy. Snossage. It's got a fake headlight. Well, I wouldn't call it fake, but you know. Gotta make it look like all the freaking Dodge Challengers here in my town. But we gotta make it look as obnoxious as possible. That is where it's at. Go with the carbon fiber hood. Carbon fiber that. The rims, we're gonna leave them as is. Black out the tint. Just give it something real simple. And then this is where it gets, this is where the fun starts. So when we're doing a Dodge Challenger, there's only one thing that you should be searching for when pimping out your Dodge Challenger. And that's going to be description. Uh, how do I word this so I can get the most accurate? Punjabi? I don't know. No, those are not what I'm thinking of. Punjab? No farmers, no food. That's a really good one. That one I resonate with. Oh my god. Faster, faster. Kisan? Is that what the, is that what the the name is? Maybe I can look for that. Um here to other side flip. What's Kisan mean? I've never heard that term be used before. No. Um, okay, what about Hanuman? Hanuman. Um, Hindu? Hindu? Oh god, the cr the freaking swastika. Um. <laughs> That's all stupid. Is there really not a Hanuman one? I feel like... Ah, 
I don't want to look up Indian. I feel like that's too on the nose. We have the mo we have the motorcycles. We got a guy with the turban. American spirit. That's actually not bad. There it is. That's a pretty good one. Let's go. Today's race is brought to you by American Spirits. If you're going to smoke cigarettes, smoke American Spirits. There we go. I feel like I need to center it. The American spirit, no farmers, no food. What number are we going to give this thing? No number? We'll just leave it out of this. This is already pretty accurate to most of the Dodge Challengers you see in my neighborhood. Well, maybe not in my neighborhood now, but where I used to live, ugh, it was a uh, place of very different cultures than I was used to. And it drove me insane, you could say. You could say it drove me quite literally insane. We're going to start with the early days of motor racing. Drop by when you can. Right. Alright, this better be manual. Oh, it was manual without clutch. Why was the... Super not showing me gear shifting? Intimidating and iconic. Six stars at speed traps. Alright, what are we going to do with this thing? That supercharger hum is so... Iconic, I guess. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I mean, its acceleration is actually pretty impressive, all things considered. And where do we red at? Maybe just a little bit into the camshaft, barely any. But we could put a little bit of work onto this thing and it'll turn out great, I imagine. Actually, we can just do it right here. But yeah, I made the brakes more sensitive and the accelerator uh, less sensitive. Even though, even the settings, it's the other way around. If you set it to low sensitivity, that means that it's easier to press it. And if you set it to high sensitivity, it means that it's harder to press it. But I don't really understand why it's that backwards, but whatever. At least I think it's backwards. God, this shirt sucks because it has like a tag on the inside or maybe I just have fleas or something because it's super itchy on one spot and I feel like there's a tag there. All right, um, so what do we need to do? We need to bump up the camshaft just a tiny bit, whatever one tier is, so we can get that 7,000 red line, put a big boy supercharger and give it some nice exhaust. That should be it. Ah, we'll do the intake. I always do intake and exhaust together because it feels like you can't you can't do one without the other. We'll leave the Brembo's on, but we'll give it uh, some sports suspension, weight reduction, some rear roll rigidity. I feel like that's more important for now. Um, I could be wrong. Probably am. Usually am. Uh, transmission. Honestly, the stock transmission is pretty robust. I would say 
the race diff on any stuff. It's interesting. The Liberty Walk. I mean, might as well. There's a Liberty Walk body kit. I mean, it drops down its performance quite a bit. But that looks a little too much for me, for my personal taste. Um, obviously, if we upgrade the tires at all, it's going to... They're going to um, not like that. We'll put the drag tires on. Um, widen up the rears just a wee bit. Put some 295s. Widen. Mm, we don't need to widen out too much. And then... What else are we missing? We've done pretty much everything we can. I mean, we can maybe... I mean, there's already 275s in the front. What the heck? Uh... Let's just do ignition system. And then the flywheel. So we're going to bump it up to uh, 898 horsepower, drop it by 500 pounds, and somehow the lateral Gs do not change by one fraction at all. That's crazy. Um, well, this thing's going to be a rocket ship now. And especially now that we have the drag tires on, I feel a lot more confident. There we go. Yeah, just... Boosting the cams just a little bit is all we needed to make this thing a uh, amazing little car. We did a barrel roll there unintentionally, but uh, you know, we'll take those. This thing's not just purely for drag racing, because I don't really like drag racing all too much, to be completely honest. Um, with that being said, it's probably still got a really good acceleration characteristic. All right, we gotta take a photo of it. Let's hope we don't crash. Focus. Effects mode. Shutter speed. Focus. There it is. Boom. There it is. Welcome back, Pro Gamer. We got the no farmers, no food. Dodge Challenger. Just call it, uh... Young Valley. I don't know. Farm Boy Challenge. Charlinger? Charlinger. Challenge. Challenge. Now it's French. French muscle cars? French muscle car. I need to make a French muscle car. That's what that's what's going to be the next project we got going on here. The devil's in the details. Vroom vroom. What are the topics of today? It's okay. Head-on collisions. Number one 
positive total losses in all Dodge owners. Oh, can this thing drift or no? Hi there, Courtney. Welcome back. Today we're playing Forza. Every week I do all the weekly challenges for this game just so I can say that I've done all the weekly challenges. And I just finished off with uh, this Dodge Challenger here. How has everybody's day been going? Oh, I have to win a drag race? God dang it. Of course I do. Of course I have to win a drag race. Just my luck. Just my luck. It's a uh, it's a beautiful world we live out here. Um, okay, well I gotta go find. Hopefully that didn't do anything. No. Have to find a drag race. A drag race, and I don't know which one will be the best. We'll probably do this one because it's the shortest. I want to say. I think this one's the shortest. I think it's the shortest, so I think we'll be fine. Now, I have the drag tires. It's wet, so there might be some some issues with the weather being wet. Speaking of wet weather, hydration. Don't forget to hydrate. Okay, I'll start off the topic of the day. Bugs. I hate bugs. And if we ever ban cows and chickens, I'm just going to go vegetarian. I'm not going to eat bug meat. I'm, I, I can't do it. I'll eat shrimp. I'll eat seafood. Not all of it. I've had urchin before. Urchin was disgusting. I almost threw up trying to eat it. Trying to eat it. But those are the closest to bugs I will get. I would rather just eat beans, legumes, and nuts for my protein than eat bugs. Let's make that very clear. But I've been getting a bunch of these stupid little things called carpet beetles everywhere and they are the most annoying thing ever. I had them at my old apartment. I had them at my dad's house. I have them here. They're just annoying little tiny. They're like the size of, I don't know. What's a good comparison? Like half of a grain of rice. They're tiny. But the problem is they look like little ladybug type beetles where they have this black and white version of spots on their back and they eat carpet and fibers and all that and that's why they show up and I vacuum the heck out of my room and they still show up and they show up on my desk too randomly. I'll find one crawling on my mouse pad. I'm like, God dang it. And I flush it down the toilet or down the sink. I should be more precise, but um, they're everywhere and bugs are annoying. So. That's my story of the day. Let's see if we can do something with the challenger here. There it is. No farmers, no foods, Dodge Challenger. Um, unironically, there are many Dodge Challengers in my hometown that have stickers that say that and are also that big and are also on Dodge Challengers. Um, but not an, not an SRT Hellcat. Let, let's be clear. It's probably not going to be an SRT Hellcat that has that on it. But, um, okay. I want to do anything goes Drift Zone. Anything goes Modern Rally. Um, what are we doing first? Oh my god. Wait a minute. There are so many things to do, because it's a brand new season, too. That I don't know what to do. We'll do the trial. The trial is always fun, because everyone complains about this mode, since it's a co-op mode, and you have to race with other people. Rods and Custom 600. You hate bugs, too. See, here's the thing. It's one of those things, you know, you get those in life every now and then. Uh, it, it depends on where you draw the line, but essentially, you know, there's those things in the, out there in the world where you're like, I don't mind you, 
being here but can you just be here somewhere else and so like when you're thinking about bugs for me at least I think to myself I love bugs I love creatures insects arthropods various crustaceans out there you know I I, I generally like them I think they're really cool I think watching planet earth stuff about you know bugs is really interesting but it's one of those things where I don't want to be anywhere near them though it's like I can appreciate them but want nothing to do with them I think uh, everyone's got a little bit of that in their life and for me definitely bugs are one of them I can't get away from them right now it's the season where cockroaches are everywhere and it is awful it is absolutely awful and I've stopped cleaning up after them what I mean by that is even outside I know it's kind of pointless I know it's pointless to kill cockroaches outside but I do it anyways and I just leave them out there because it's just it just becomes so tiring cleaning up after all the dead cockroaches at my old apartment fun fact um, I don't know if I have the video saved anymore. This is not, it, I would say this is like a 7 out of 10 on the disgusting scale. Like, it's not grotesque, but it is pretty gross. Um, where essentially, I would go on my walks with my doggie. She's, I think she's underneath the bed right now, hiding. But I would go on these walks with my doggie, and at the apartment complex I used to live at, the people would leave a crap ton of breadcrumbs everywhere for the the geese and uh, Muscovy ducks and we had a couple of other bird type creatures out there just like regular mallards too um, they were not like nice ponds they were just literal man-made like fountains in our apartment complex and a crap ton of birds love to go there but point being is they would leave out the breadcrumbs for the birds and when I would walk my dog at night in the middle of summer, you would see the breadcrumbs just covered in this brown pile. And you would like shine your flashlight on it. And it was literally, I kid you not, this is why I'm upset I don't have the video anymore. It might be on my iCloud. Thousands, literal thousands of cockroaches on a pile. And I'm like, that is the most disgusting thing I've ever seen in my life. And there's like ones that are like this big, you know, tiny cockroaches. There's the big, big suckers that are like June bugs. And they're just feasting upon all these breadcrumbs that these dumbass neighbors, tenants, they're not neighbors. If you live in an apartment complex, I'm sorry, they're not your neighbors. They're fellow tenants. Um, they leave out all this shit because they're, well, they just leave out shit anyways. The apartment complex is like complex I was at was awful um, do not regret leaving it one bit uh, anyways but you would see thousands of cockroaches out and it was like the worst I don't know what you'd call that fear but when you see a pile of things squirming around that is mm, well chef's kiss that was a wonderful place to move out of honestly best decision of my life anyways all right so this mode is the trial where you work together with five other human drivers going up against the red team, which are the drivatars, or in other words, they're the AI drivers. And you have to work together while also not sabotaging each other. And I'm going to be in what I call my Bonnie and Clyde ride. This is a little forward, not sure what it is, but uh, it's like an old old Ford early 1900s vehicle and ooh, this thing kind of rips it it goes pretty quick but unfortunately you get rammed by teammates all the time but yeah so um, this mode's probably the most annoying mode in the game because it forces you to team up with a bunch of other people and they don't really ever oh my god king please he's got his low rider oh my god he almost he just missed the checkpoint for no reason that's fine that's fine 
we're used to those things. And I also have the Chop Top. I, I don't know if the Chop Top is a different version or if this is just the normal version, but as you can see, there's very little visibility. So I might just turn it to this view here. There we go. Anyway, so I mean, this thing's my little Bonnie and Clyde ride. It's got uh, a souped up little engine here, weight reduction, all the performance parts that you would not expect in a vehicle that looks like this. But I mean, with that cherry red paint job and the black roof, it does kind of look clean, if I do say my myself. I would be caught dead in one of these things, preferably with several hundred bullet holes in the side door, just like Bonnie and Clyde. Antonia? How about I pass up Antonia? Alright, Melt RR's a friendly teammate, but he's in front of me. He's not really anywhere close to Pablo, who's in first right now. But yeah. I don't know what everyone else's week has been like, but uh, I'm so glad tomorrow's Friday. I'm not sure if I'm going to go up to the mountains. Oh my god. Barcella? Nice. That's a very artificial blue. <clears throat> Alright, this is the last lap. Unfortunately, there are no rewinds like in single player, so... I guess... For most people who play driving games, that is the most ridiculous thing to have in a game is a rewind ability. But it's so useful when you're me and you suck. So let's just get that out there before someone else calls it out again. Yes, I know. So we're here to talk about cockroaches and other creepy crawlies but that's fine we're we're safely in the lead here I think we're chilling it's been a week yeah so as far as anything exciting for me uh, I got my Amazon stuff today um, I got a new tripod for my webcam so my my previous I love this word word of the day if you didn't if you didn't study your vocabulary like I did, um, well, actually, this is not really that complex of a word, but anyways, I got a new tripod for my webcam, and this was the one that it came with, and it's this chintzy little thing, and that's the word of the day, chintzy, but that just means, like, cheap, fragile, flimsy. Um, this chintzy little thing, and now I have this new one that's got, like, these metal support things, uh... It also has a retractable neck, so you can make it go even higher up and lower down than uh, my other one. This one's just, like, literally, that's all it was. But um, I got that, and then the other thing I got in the mail, which is really stupid, but I got gold um, <laughs> metal keycaps for my, w my WASD. So now I have some blinged out WASD, so when I'm, when I'm, when I'm, Reaching for home base, I always have that nice brushed metal finish because actually my friend let me know that there was a pre-sale going on at drop.com. If you've never been to drop.com, check them out. They make really, 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 really nice boutique um, like desktop keyboards type stuff, whether it's keycaps, keyboards, uh, desk mats, uh, headphones. They, they do a lot of stuff and... They had a pre-order that I just discovered and promptly made an order of. I have this big gouge on my steering wheel, I just noticed. Anyways, um, a pre-order for an entire set of metal keycaps. So I'm pretty excited for that. And there are all these... All the drive guitars are so dumb sometimes. They just drift around. Look at all of them just drifting around. Oh my god, he's going to run me off the bridge. Alright, this is where I might actually have a pretty good advantage here. Alright. 
Oh no, everyone else is catching up to me. There we go. Alrighty. With me in second. Ooh, I need to let off the gas here. <clears throat> we have a sizable lead to them. You can see a little bit on the top right. It's cut out a little bit, but um, the overall score of our entire team is what determines whether or not we win this race. So we are safely in the lead right now. So all I have to do is maintain here. Hopefully I can pass him up though. That would be really nice. Um, let's see. Okay. 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 We got to turn here, drop it down to fourth, gun it out straight on. Let's go. Uh, I could have taken that a bit faster, but whatever. There we go. This thing's got modern day handling for how old this thing is. There we go. All right. We're going to finish pretty strong. What else do we want to talk about? Come on. Come on. Rapid fire. Let's go. Crab people. Crab people. Oh, it's the Ford Deluxe Coupe. That's what it is. Um, yeah, my tune for it's actually really good. Surprisingly. Um, we got a rapid fire. How about, how was my week? How was my week? My week was, has been okay. I would say overall, I would say, I would say it was full of a lot of stressful things that I made stressful just because I'm such a disagreeable person that I, I seek out conflict when I could do the exact opposite and not seek out conflict. Um, I would say that that was the worst part about it, whether it's like me dealing with neighbors, uh, the house that I live in, stuff like that. Those are not fun things to, to have to deal with, but also it's my fault. So I'm one of those people where it's like, sure, you can believe in karma, which I definitely think there is. Uh, I, so, okay, here's the thing. Here's a little bit of a rant, a free rant. You don't have to pay for this one. Um, but karma is stupid. I'm going to say it right now because I don't want an excuse for people to be good. I want people to be good for the sake of being good, not because... The karmic balance suggests that if you're bad, then you have bad things happen to you. No, that's dumb. To me, that's really dumb. I feel like that that's a horrible way to motivate people to be good. It's like the only reason you should be good is because good things will happen to you. What? That's the dumbest thing ever. Like, I like karma. I don't think people who believe in karma are bad inherently, but... It's an awful reason to be a good person is because of karma. That's all I'm trying to say. Um, because it has nothing to do with you being a good person, but rather you having good things happen to you. Like, how do you turn being a good person into the most selfish, self-centered thing ever? And the only reason I bring this up is because I'm an awful, <laughs> disagreeable person that gets into conflict with everyone for valid reasons. Most of the time, I would argue they are valid reasons. Um, I would say most of the time I get upset are because of reasons that a normal person would get upset about. But the difference is I get really mad and 
Um, I take things, I take things, it's almost like I take them personally. I don't think I do. See, that's the thing. At the end of the day, it's nothing personnel, but like, sometimes it feels like I get personal about it, but I'm really not. It's just, I get really angry when bad things happen. And I'm just like, why? Why is this the reality we live in? And so, you know, that's like what my week has been like. Long story short, that's, that's a very roundabout way of, uh, describing my week but uh that's how it's been so far okay it's just a single race we'll we'll do that um but it's only thursday so i have the whole weekend but the problem is even with the weekend see this is what i hate i don't know why the more you want to enjoy things the more people want to i don't know I don't even know where I'm going with this. Point is, week this weekend I got invited to something up in the mountains, just like a little camp, not camping, but just a cabin weekend sort of thing, and I'm not really into it, and I don't want to go. <laughs> There's like so many other things I want to do over the weekend, and it's just like... One of the hardest things in life is having to suck it up and do things for other people. <laughs> I'm so, I sound like such a bad person. I'm talking about how karma's stupid. I'm generally a mean person and I hate doing things for other people. Like what am I even on about? This is not a very good, it's not a flattering look for me. Um, but that's okay. Cause if I was going for flattery, I would lie. Um, but we're going for truth, and if I'm going to drop a truth bomb right now, it's that I don't particularly want to go up to the mountains and go to the lodge, cabin, whatever it is, for a day. And it's like, why? Well, the pros and cons of this are, I have to drive an hour, which is not that long. I've driven much longer than that in the past. I've driven from Santa Cruz to Los Angeles, which is like seven, eight hours, depending on how you get there um, and so I don't want to drive I don't want to get bit by a million mosquitoes because it's hot right now and there's no doubt gonna be a million bugs there there's also apparently ground hornets up in the area by where we're at so uh, watch out for the hornets those are actually a bigger problem than the mosquitoes one of my neighbors said because he's a scout master, and I asked him, as a lowly city slicker, I have no idea what to expect. But that's not saying I've never been up in the mountains. Like, I live pretty close to Yosemite, and I've been there in the past. Um, I've been to various trails, and I live in California. And it's not like I've never done it. It's just like, if I were to choose between doing that and getting groceries god i sound so fucking i should see <laughs> i i was gonna say i should be on seinfeld for how petty i am but like if i were forced to p choose between getting groceries and going on a weekend getaway to a cabin up in the the lake the mountain lake where i live i would choose getting groceries i don't know what that says about me but um you know it is what it is Where do I live? We got mosquitoes here too. Oh yeah, no worries. I live in California. And you are in Louisiana. Okay, so I say this to every single person that hops on my stream because also this car's really loud. Um, maybe if I go in third person. But I say this to everyone in every stream. I understand that one person does not define the entirety of a country or a state. But I always ask people about where they're from, nothing specific, but just enough because uh, one of my favorite things are to ask about really popular misconceptions, in other words, stereotypes about where people are from. So like with my, with my follower Gersten, I always make fun of him for being German and uh, being into latex bondage. But my question for Louisiana is simply, wait, you're, oh, you have an ad. Well, you can't even hear me right now. 
That's so funny. All right, the ad ends in 10 seconds. I got to gift you a sub so I don't have to uh, wait for the, the ad to end. All right, all right. Wait, what? We have another minute now. Let's see. How do I... Ah! Sorry for ads. Lol. Ah! Alright. I need to just disable ads. I don't make any money from ads, so why do them? Oh! This thing has a lot of pep to it for a old Elise. I guess that's why it's A tier. I need to fix the stripe on it though. It looks awful. Um, and so I do this to every person that hops on my stream where I ask them a little bit of uh, about their where they're from because I I know a lot about a lot of different places and they're all stereotypes, which is unfortunate, but sometimes it's funny to ask if they're if they're true or not. But for Louisiana, okay, so the only thing I've really heard about Louisiana, I know I've never been. First I have to say that. Um I know about the wards. If you're talking about like New Orleans, I know about the wards. Um I know about shrimp po boys but particularly about louisiana the the word around the street that i've heard from pretty much a unanimous vote from every single person that has talked about louisiana is that it's one of the worst places ever and it's awful to live at um i don't know if that's true but i can imagine that a combination of awful weather hurricanes uh crime rates and other things that Louisiana's might not be where it's at in terms of where you should live. Um, so, oh, now you got the ad? I was, I was watching the ad go by and I was hoping that it had ended by then. I don't know if you heard the last part of my question, but basically, yeah. I ask everyone when they tell me where they're from uh, a little question about something I've heard about that place, whether it's true or not. And what I've heard about Louisiana is, um, well, it's awful there. <laughs> totally agree. Storms, yeah, they suck. Okay, you... I, see, I tried to time it after the ad. I, it shows me when the ads pop up, so no worries about that. Um, storms, they suck. One great thing is the food and the scenery on some parts, and some people. Yeah, I think that's... <laughs> that's always one of my favorite things that people say. Like, I say that about people here, too. It's like, some people are pretty tolerable where I'm from. It's like, wow. That's... That's... Sign me up now. Let me... Let me, let me sign a 12 year or 12 month. Yeah. 12 year. Let me just take out a mortgage on a new house in Louisiana right now. Some people are nice. Um, but yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> that's one of my favorite things to say about a place that's like got a lot of cons to it. You're like, yeah, some of the people are all right. I feel like I contribute equally. Like if we're going to talk about, if we're going to talk about like karma being stupid, Let's talk about how I, I still follow the karmic balance despite thinking it's stupid where I basically do equal. I'm chaotic neutral. I would say I'm chaotic neutral. I if, if we were doing an alignment chart right now, that's that's exactly where I would end up because I'm absolutely on nobody's side. Like I'll be nice. I'll be sour sweet gone. I'm like a sour patch kid. Um, and that's a problem. Because one of these days, I'm going to get, not in trouble, 
because that would assume that I did something wrong. But anytime I'm like petty and mean, it's not because I'm necessarily like trying to abuse or break the law. It's usually I'm like being a being a a person that that just is like, well, it's the law. Anyways, point being is I definitely don't do anything that's like illegal. I'm just saying sometimes I'm a dick about things. <laughs> and so because of that, um, I, I'm perfectly balanced in my karma. I feel like I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Oh my God, this is so annoying. I just want the stripe to match up. I don't know why it's not. And so, yeah, karmic balance is a bitch, but somehow I follow it, even though I don't really aspire to that sort of mindset. Um, but yeah, people are annoying. Sometimes I'm one of them. That's the problem. That's the problem. But I guess the solution is acknowledging that I, I can be that way because everyone can be that way. The moral of the story is anyone can be the bad guy. Um, but I like to differentiate myself and say that I, I, it, yeah, hey, no one wants to be the guy that does it, but, you know, sometimes you gotta be. And so, anyways. But yeah, no, it, the food is good. That is all that matters, honestly, because I drown my sorrows in food nine out of ten days of the week. Yep, we have ten day weeks here because it's awful. They wanted to add three more days just so you could make your life as miserable as possible. I don't live in a nice part of California. Let me just be very clear about that. Um, not that there's really that many nice parts of California anymore. They're all kind of awful unless you have upwards of a million dollars and live in a really, really nice neighborhood. Everything else is generally pretty awful. Um, what are we doing here? Um, but that's just my opinion. Don't take my word for it. I'm like the biggest anti-California head that you'll ever meet. Well, maybe not. There's a lot of people who don't like California nowadays, but, but I live here, so I feel extra special when I complain about it. Um, but food wise, what do we have here? I'm not annoying so far. Well, that's good. See, <laughs> the wonderful thing is at the end of the day, we can all just be happy in our little, uh, our little, our little slice of pie. You know, that's why I unironically am actually kind of optimistic about the metaverse because people were talking about when Mark Zuckerberg first announced meta and all that stuff. It was like, oh, this is stupid. This is never going to catch on. This is like VR. I am actually a little more a little more hopeful about the metaverse because I think that we're gonna reach a point and I hate to say it because a lot of people will say I'm like a doomer for saying this but I don't think we're ever gonna get along um, hot take I don't think we're ever gonna just come to an agreement about one thing or another I think we're always gonna be fighting each other at least that's what I've learned in the past few years. Um, I've like tried, I've dabbled in everything. I've tried, I've dabbled in being attentive to the world around me. I've dabbled in like ignoring it and act like acting like nothing matters except for what's right in front of your face. And I've done a little bit of both. And what I can say is with absolute confidence, I'd, I'd put money on it. Maybe not my life savings, but I'd put money on it that we're not going to actually get to the point where one side of this argument of how we should live our life and what culture we live is going to beat the other. I don't think we're going to reach that point. And I hate to say it, but whatever side you're on and whatever you believe in and whoever you disagree with and you think is like the most awful person in the world, um, there's always going to be people like that out there. And so... Unironically, I think the metaverse is actually kind of a insane concept for that reason because then you can literally create and I'm not saying I'm I'm a person who would do this, but you can create your own world where your own rules apply 
and it's all virtual so it's really hard to prove that you're doing anything wrong technically and you can literally do what you do on Twitter do what you do on Reddit on Twitch where you ban people you filter them out and you create your own perfect little universe um, and it's like that is the answer you get these people who who want to believe one way or another and then you get the people who want to believe the exact opposite thing and people like me who are like well I try to see both sides of the argument for everything and it's like I'm at the point where I'm kind of just tired of like this whole football match we're watching of people going back and forth taking W's taking L's taking dubs taking L's and it's like I see both sides doing it so at the end of the day even though the metaverse is a meme I think it's actually a solid idea maybe Facebook is not gonna be the one that implements the the real metaverse maybe it's gonna be Second Life anyone ever play Second Life out there um, I never did because it was way too confusing to install and make an account and everything but you know maybe Second Life creates the best metaverse but I'm at the point where I'm sick and tired of picking sides because every time I pick a side I get like butt hurt because my side's not winning and I get butt hurt because my side suddenly becomes a traitor or the other side has good points you know like I've learned to be a regular person in a lot of things where I realize that not one group or and I'm not talking about politics only I'm talking about everything and that's why the metaverse is so crazy because I think that just creating a place where you can express yourself however you want is really powerful especially for someone like me who has the tag in my the tag in my stream as free speech all the time that's like the the one thing I always talk about it's like people want to get rid of that for the sake of being like PC which I get it I I just wish we didn't have to force people to say those things rather they would just learn not to say them um, and the problem is like I said some people draw the line at different places and the metaverse would be able to solve that but at the same time the metaverse is hella stupid and I would never sign up for that because I think Facebook and Instagram are so I don't use Instagram I don't use Twitter I don't use any social media that's the problem I have is that I've just learned to disconnect from all those things because when I used to use them a lot more one I wasn't really popular so it felt weird using them all the time Two, when I did get the semblance of being popular, what I thought was popular, it like amplified everything I did a million fold. And then at the end of the day, um, it was a waste of time because it wasn't being productive at all. And so like Facebook, Instagram, I maybe go on. I don't even go on those. I'm not even going to lie. I haven't been on either of those in years. Um, Twitter, I just post some random stuff every now and then, but people don't like Twitter now. And here's the thing. Okay, so I'm going to say it. This is going to be another. The, the Forza streams always have the best hot takes. Um, I'm going to say it. I don't think Twitter sucks because Elon bought it and made it into like 4chan, which is another one of my tags. So you should be able to predict where this is going when you just look at my tags. I don't understand why people don't read my tags. I should have a tag that says read my tags. It literally says, what are my tags again? Like angry, irreverent, uh, 4chan free speech. Like, you know what you're getting into when you come here. I'm going to be respectful though. Like that's the thing that people don't really make the connection to is like, just because you support free speech and the ability of people to say whatever they want akin to what I'm talking about, 4chan Twitter, doesn't mean you're a jerk or a bad person. It just means that you believe in that kind of stuff and not everyone does I get it not everyone wants to just be like well you shouldn't be allowed to say this this and this I agree with you but I'm not gonna stop someone else from saying those things um, I I understand that everyone comes from a different background so it doesn't apply to them and I'm 
privileged in that sense. But at the same time, um, where was I going with this? What was I even talking about? Um, something up 4chan. Twitter. Oh, yeah. My hot take about Elon. It, it's not so much that Twitter sucks because Elon bought it and turned it into 4chan, essentially. Twitter sucks because it's a cesspool of just awful takes. Just awful, awful takes. Like... I I go on Twitter every now and then just to like be like I need to be on Twitter more so that I can promote myself I can link up and network with people better and then I scroll through Twitter for about 30 seconds and then I realize why (laughs) I don't go on Twitter it's the worst it is just mm, mm, just stinky stinky bad awful it just doesn't interest you, Courtney. No, I mean, because, like, I don't go on Reddit either because I have a problem with, okay, so here's the thing. If I got free speech and 4chan are my, as my tags, you can probably assume that I don't like Reddit. I go on Reddit all the time, though. That's the problem is Reddit is ubiquitous. doesn't mean you have to like it. The difference between, I would say, Reddit and Twitter and Instagram, some of the other, other ones I'm talking about, are that... Or is that Reddit does not really require you to be a person that uses social media all the time. I just use Reddit for purely informational things. And once it gets into like opinion stuff, that's when I shut my brain off and just scroll past it. Because anything, like especially politics, but if we're going to talk about just normal people stuff, like my favorite video game Overwatch, every time I go to the Overwatch subreddit, it's literally just... Imagine someone pulling down their gym shorts, aiming at the wall, and projectile shitting everywhere. That's all it is. Anything that's not about just information. Like, maybe maybe there's something something about that. But I only like the, the stuff that gives you information or, you know, that's just like, aww, you know, r slash aw. That, that's, that stuff's all right. But then once people start telling me their opinions, I just shut out because it's like, People want to be right. That That's the worst thing about everyone's fucking opinion is it's like an ass. Everyone's got one and they all stink. Um, and the problem is everyone wants to be right. I like having opinions because I like being an individual. And a lot of the time I get stuck dealing with either people who don't want to be an individual because of one reason or another. And I'm not going to go super into like a tangent about that. I don't think everyone's a sheeple or whatever they call them, but more importantly, the amount of like just AI that's becoming more and more prevalent. Also welcome, uh, kennel B. Sorry. I saw you earlier. I was going to say welcome. Good evening. But, uh, I totally forgot because I'm on, I'm on one right now. Um, classic sport cars D tier. And so, there's a lot of AI out there, and when I want to just veg out, then I'm going to end up sounding like an AI or robot. You know, like, we have all these term- terms that you use to describe people and their mindsets, and the the one that I always have liked, because it's, it's sort of in the sphere of influence that I do, is you have the three, the normies, the robots, and the chads, where it's like... That one never really made sense to me because a Chad could be also a normie at the same time. So I don't know why they they call them both. But anyways, um, (laughs) like we have societies out there where people try to try to differentiate themselves within those. And I think having opinions is one of the most important things for taking yourself out of being a normie i the see though okay i'm not going to use that wording because it's very confusing because a normie is more of a robot than a robot a robot's not actually a robot a robot is more of someone who's got like really strong autism or maybe asperger's that's what the definition of a quote-unquote robot is which is kind of funny because it's like you would expect that to be what um a normie is which a normie is an npc Or in other words, someone who doesn't really think too hard and just says whatever the most, like, kitschy, popular thing is to do. But you would think that's what a robot does, because a robot just spits back things to you. But in reality, a robot's someone 
who may not be a normie, but also has like really strong tendencies of quote unquote being on the spectrum or just doing things that people would associate with that. And I'm not saying that everyone who's a robot is autistic or has some sort of spectrum disorder. I'm just saying that that's the stereotype of what a robot is. All the terminology is confusing because I would say that a Chad is probably the most normie person out there despite being called a Chad, which a Chad obviously is the one that uh, takes pride in physical appearances and uh, just being based being based the based counter um saying things doing things that are considered based but it's like chads also have some of the most normy opinions like i'm gonna go to the gym um date the pretty person and uh be successful and it's like i feel like that's a pretty normy viewpoint to have so all of the naming is really confusing and backwards but essentially a normie is a robot a robot is a nor well okay the, the robot's the only one that doesn't have a have a rock paper scissors parallel to another word the chat is a normie a normie is a robot and a robot is a uh a person with with uh hyper hyper focused tendencies i don't know what's What's the what's the word we would say for that? I'm gonna use the Lotus Elan sprint for this race, but yeah. Anyways, um, that's a little education on what a robot normie and a Chad is slash are, what they are, what what one of them is and what all of them are. Dude, grammar is crazy. Whoops, I accidentally hit my my little uh, ear things. If you haven't noticed, I got my in ears right now. They are really nice. These are Sony. What are they? Something WXF 1000s. Um, they're one of the ones with like the charging case and all that. I use them for work so I can write them off as a tax expense. But they are incredible. Good noise canceling, good sound quality. Um, sounds like the crowd's just outside my window. But yeah, you know, um, I don't remember where I was getting with the, the whole normies and robots thing. But, uh, you know, it is what it is. Thank you so much. And Vixidi. And Vixidi. Thank you so much for the follow. Welcome to the channel, by the way. If you're new, if you're not, I apologize. I can't remember every one of my little my little duckies, but uh, we all try to stay nicely bunched together in a row here. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Everyone's got an opinion. Some people have the opinion you agree with, and that's the dangerous thing is when you got someone who you have an opinion sorry this car is really loud I got the uh, oh god oh it's like tenant the car is driving backwards ah! I'm drifting um but yeah everyone's got an opinion and I think reddit is a a great place for information, an awful place for opinions. That, okay, there we go, we finished the story. Um, also that's something you should be aware of if you're joining my channel, is that we'll never get to the point, ever. Like, I don't think I've ever told a short story. I'm, I'm the uncle that, that never shuts up when he tells you the stupid story about how he lost his, his retainer in Cabo San Lucas. Um, it's a 30 minute story just to say you put it in the trash because you accidentally forgot it was wrapped up in the napkin by the dinner table. Why do you have to tell me a 30 minute story about that, uncle? Um, but that's how all of my stories are. So the simple question of, um, what social media I use being Reddit and not really using Reddit, but just using it for information, um, it turned into a whole philosophical debate of what a normie is, so... Um, just be prepared for those. And if I ever go a little overboard, see, here's the thing. With the whole thing I've been talking about, of having opinions and whatnot, if I ever go overboard, that's the whole point of free speech. That's what you're supposed to tell me. You're like, hey man, that one's a little too far. Um, God, 
that was uh we just witnessed a head-on collision possible fatality here on the uh country road shout out to john denver shout out to john denver uh country everyone if you know the lyrics sing it along with me country road take me home to the place I belong West Virginia I don't know the lyrics to that part Mountain Mama take me home those country roads so there was a period of college where I unironically blasted that on my phone on my walk back to my car in the remote parking lot of campus and I would smoke cigarettes while sitting on the trunk of my car, listening to John Denver's Country Road. And as I said earlier, I'm a I'm a city slicker who's never ha <laughs> lived out in the country in my life. But anyways, um, Country Road, take me home to the place I'm alone. I also can't sing if you haven't realized, but if there's a particular song that I like, I'll do it anyways. And that's the problem. That's the problem. You know why it's a problem? Why is it a problem, MongoCast? Why would it be a problem that you sing occasionally, even if you're not good at singing? Why would that be a problem? Because I hate, hate, hate singing. No, I don't hate singing. I love music. I just hate seeing on my front page of Twitch someone playing the fucking drums and it blowing out my ears when I go onto Twitch. I go on Twitch, it's like, this is a streamer you might like! And it's fucking Drum Man Gioni, where he's literally got like these two giant doom 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 and I'm just like, whatever. What's up, Invixity? You are new. I know you are, because it gives me five notifications to let me know that you're new. It's kind of annoying, but hey, you deal with it. Where am I wanting to move to or interested in? Okay, so this is the rub. Let me tell you a little bit about myself. I'm trying to move out of California, as you've, uh, as you've probably noticed. And my, my top two, there's two places I'd want to move to, and I'm kind of split on which one I'm gonna settle with. First off, I'm saving money. Once I save up enough money for rent uh, for like a year, the moving fees and all that, I'm gonna move. But essentially until then, the two places that I'm like dying trying to decide, Nashville is a pretty good choice. Nashville, not gonna lie, Tennessee, if it wasn't for the fact that, um, actually, why wouldn't I wanna move to Tennessee? I don't know, probably because Tennessee is a good one. I just have never been interested in it. There's a lot of people in Tennessee. I want to say Beretta. No. Yeah, no, I think the Beretta factory is in Tennessee too. I have a Beretta. And so I would love to be close to where my baby was born. But uh, no, my top two, like I said, every, every story has got to have a 30 minute answer. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's just how I am. Um, I'm not trying to farm ad revenue. Trust me. Um, I would turn off my ads if I realized that they're four 30 second ads on my channel. I have it set to automatic ads, so don't blame me. Before I had it set to like 15 second ad breaks, but now it I have it set to the smart setting, which apparently the smart setting just means, haha, your, your viewers are suckers and are willing to watch two minutes of ads before they hear you talk again, which I appreciate, don't get me wrong, but that's Twitch, that, blame Twitch for that. That's their, their smart ad sense or whatever. And I just have it set to that right now. So I'll change that probably after this stream. But to answer your question in the most roundabout way, for a while, I've been split between these two states. I'm not exactly sure what city. Now my driving is getting worse as I focus more on my answer than my driving. Um, this is why I don't go on my phone while I'm driving ever. The only thing I do is change the song. That's pretty much as much attention I give to my phone while driving. But um, Texas and New Hampshire are the two states I'd move to. Texas is becoming less and less of a ideal choice because it's becoming California. 
and everyone from California is moving to Texas, and so I feel like it's going to be so disingenuous if I move to Texas as a Californian, and I move there, and then everyone is just California all over again, and I'm like, I moved out of California to escape all you guys. It's just a bunch of people LARPing as Texans, and... That's kind of cringe. Like, as much as I'd love to be a Californian that moves to Texas, because I'm so gung-ho about not living in California anymore, I don't want to do it as much as I used to because everyone from California has been doing it, and I would hate to see a bunch of Californians LARPing as Texans. Okay, that turn was a lot sharper than I anticipated. I might actually throw this for my team. Come on, reverse. Oh wow, even the, the AI are doing it. And then the second one, I don't know if you caught that, but uh, New Hampshire. So New Hampshire is my actual like number one state I'd move to because they are up in New England, so they get cold weather. I've been living in Central California for my whole life, well, except for college, where I lived at the, the coast, as everyone who goes to school in California does, is go to school at the beach, um, which is pretty awesome, not gonna lie. Uh, but that being said, um, New Hampshire has incredible weather. It's a place that actually has four seasons. That is a absolute must for me non-negotiable is that the place I moved to in the United States this also applies to places around the world for my European audience but it has to have four seasons if you move to a place that has one or two seasons it's not really worth it I'd be close to Louisiana and Texas yeah no and then maybe I'd finally go to Louisiana for the first time my brother dated a girl who went to school in Louisiana um, and he went there a lot, but I never have been. I've actually been more places outside of the United States than within. I've been to all, like, the tourist places. So I've been to Chicago, New York, Boston, Alaska, Hawaii, Seattle, um, Florida, and technically Nevada, but I've never been to Vegas. I went to Reno, um, which is, like, the worst Vegas. <laughs> And so, yeah, um, New Hampshire is like my unironic best place to live in the United States because um, as far as I'm concerned, their state motto is live free or die, which is pretty badass. But it's kind of ironic considering they have some of the highest uh, property taxes in the entire country. But that's not really a big deal if you don't own property like me or <laughs> I'm a forever renter at this point right now. But maybe one day, and I would love to do it either in Texas or New Hampshire, because I'm the exact type of person that you would imagine thriving in Texas or New Hampshire. And so New Hampshire, people don't talk about, which is an amazing thing, because as you've realized, I'm kind of low key. I don't go on social media. I generally have negative interactions with my neighbors. Um... New Hampshire is a great place for people like that because everyone minds their own goddamn business. Sure, we don't have all of the fanciest restaurants. You'd be lucky to go to Applebee's. But guess what? The people who live there are the type of people where it's like, if I'm going to go out, I want to go to Applebee's. I, I've, I want anything else, anything better than, you know, I can do it myself. And so New Hampshire is like the hidden red state up there in New England. No one talks about New England being a red area of the country, and that means conservative, Republican, whatever, and I'm not. I'm, I, I swing both ways. Like, that's probably one of the reasons I wouldn't want to go to Tennessee is because they're pretty strict on some things that are legal here in California, let's just say. Um, and I philosophically wish that was more the case. And so because of that, I'm more I'm more someone who leans towards like a libertarian my mindset, which means that I, I both have characteristics of, you know, um, being liberal and conservative because being a libertarian doesn't make you a, lib a progressive or conservative. It just means that you appreciate individual freedom more than anything else. And I do, you know, anyways, that's why I believe in the metaverse. 
Um, but New Hampshire is like a very low key state up in New England because people think of Boston, they think of Maine. Well, not Maine really. No one lives in Maine. Uh, it's actually more boring in Maine than it is in New Hampshire. But point being is they have all of the like Texas sort of mentality of this is my land. We don't share our land here. I do what I want type mentality. And um, California is not that. Let's just be very clear. California is not, hey, man, do what you want. It's, hey, man, we're going to make sure everyone does the exact same thing here. And we're going to decide what that is. And whoever's in control is who decides that. And right now it's all of that. Like, it's a lot of just letting homeless people become a, a new society within California. That's very true. That's like the most true thing ever. California has some different people. Yeah, it's it's weird because it's like a lot of the people are really progressive in a lot of avenues. Like I have no problems with all the progressive issues that are going on today. I don't have a beef with transgender people. Um, I don't have beef with with the, the conservative people either that are like, well, you're biologically not a woman. Like I don't have problems with either group. I just want everyone to <laughs> develop the metaverse so that, you know, the people who say a woman is a woman can be in their own metaverse and the people who want to be trans can be in their own metaverse too. Like as someone who is live and let live about those types of things, it's hard for me to pick a side. Cause I'm just like, I don't care. I'm personally not a member of, whatever not even trans people anything where it's a an issue i'm not i don't have a stake in that i don't have a dog in that race so it's i don't know there are people like me out there and they all live in new hampshire let me just tell you right now they all they all live in new hampshire um so that's that's why i i'm that guy that would want to move to like texas or realistically new hampshire because everyone's moving to texas and it's sort of becoming a meme now so i don't want to be a meme person california has some different people and then there are normal uh people here too yeah of course uh then you have louisiana you're not against it but when they do things that they that, but when they do the things they do that's what makes you lean towards the other side exactly right exactly and that goes all directions like i'm trying to be as neutral as possible in all this stuff because at the end of the day unless you're like engulfed in it which then you have a personal stake in it which i don't know if that makes it better or worse to hear what people think about that because then now you have an agenda like as someone who doesn't really have an agenda um los angeles la then you have la oh los angeles gotcha Right. No. And see, here's the thing. Los Angeles is... I have family there. I've been there many times in my life, as a lot of people from California have. Um, and at the end of the day, it's it's basically like talking about the U.S., the, when you talk about Los Angeles, it as much as I hate to say it as someone who literally just talked about how much I hate California, I would say that it's it's an unfair sort of criticism about Los Angeles, like to generalize it as one group of people, because much like the U.S., there are pockets of Los Angeles where people can be. I'm just going to be I'm going to be terminology neutral here so you don't know what my political affiliation is i already said i want to move to texas or new hampshire so maybe it's kind of apparent but i'll just say there are some people who have based opinions in all parts of los angeles there are there are pockets of los angeles where people that agree with the stuff that i think thrive there are pockets of los angeles where someone else who believes something completely different also thrive so as much as i hate la and it's, it's not San Francisco. It's not San Francisco. At the very least, it's not San Francisco. But you're both saying that the the whole, like, clout chasing thing is what makes... Is what makes LA despicable. That's absolutely true. I mean, there's really no point in moving to California unless you move to LA. 
I don't live in LA. I live in the central part of California, which is full of farmland and wannabes who try to flex because it's way cheaper to live here. And so because of it, the cost of living is going up because a lot of people are moving here because it's like you can be the poor, the, the poorest rich man here and everyone's going to look at you like a celebrity. And so it's just like California as a whole. And that's why I personally want to move away from it. But from everyone outside, um, it's the same idea. Like when you're talking about Los Angeles, where it, it's just awful to to really have to be somebody all the time. And it's just, yeah, anyways. All right. Well, um, thanks for tuning in, Courtney. I'm so glad that you hopped on my... Uh, my dying light stream. I need to play that game again. I get... Okay, so here's another thing you need to know about me. I... And this is what I was saying earlier. So, earlier I was talking about um, how, like, most of the time when I get angry or when I get mean, it's because of a reasonable thing. But I just am the type of person that gets, like, hyper, you know, hyper angry about stuff. And I'll blow up. The problem is, most of the things I blow up over are things that are, like reasonable people will get upset about so you know how i was talking about that earlier i only bring this up again because you got to witness that firsthand and um on my dying light stream there was someone who was just, just literally spoiling everything after i like made it very apparent that it's like hey by the way you're kind of spoiling everything and i don't like it and it's like but what if i spoiled this next scene i'm like i'm not gonna say that you can't do it but and then he does it anyways, or she, whatever, um, does it anyways. And I get like super fucking frustrated because of that happening. So that's like a perfect example of where I get upset about something that's legitimately reasonable to get upset about. But then I go like scorched earth and like declare war on the person that does that sort of thing. It's also happened on a Forza stream where I have a sub who was super nice to me until he brought up the fact that I suck at driving. And it's like, it's not the car's fault. It's just a skill issue. You're just bad at driving. And I'm like, thanks. And, you know, one of the things I always say where it's hard for me to, like, listen to that shit where I have free speech in the tag is, like, you know free speech is working. You know free speech is working when you hear something that you don't like. And so... Anyways, have a great night, Courtney. I just wanted to throw that one out there. But that's like, that's where my my mind, my frame of reference kind of goes to. Um, and I'll, I'll get to what you're saying here too. Uh, envy as well. If that's okay if I call you Envy. The, the double X's sort of throw me off. But yeah, so I mean, <laughs> it's like, yes, you can you can say whatever you want. But it doesn't mean you have to say the worst possible things. I don't know. Some people just don't read between the lines. Anyway, so you were talking about earlier envy about um, it's not cheap in California. Um, no, it's not. I live in probably not the worst part of California. I would say Sacramento is probably one of the worst parts of California and areas around there. I would say that's like a real, 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 real bad. Um, where I live is getting better but the problem is it's getting more expensive because of it and so it's like you get the worst of both worlds it's expensive and shitty where i live so you know if i'm gonna live in a shitty place at least make it cheap so ergo why i want to move to texas new hampshire is fucking expensive though because freedom ain't free apparently um but do i know mark rober yes absolutely um that is dude Saying that I explain things like Mark Rober is one of the biggest compliments I've ever had on this channel. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Yeah, Mark Rober is... See, he's like the perfect example of why I feel like it's easy to get lost in... in... in ideology sometimes. Where it's like, I think he's an incredible genius. But he definitely seems like a person that would have different politics than me, right? He seems kind of, you know, bleeding heart, liberal type person. But he's also a mega genius. And he's also super cool and funny. And he's also super friendly and chill. And it's like, 
why would I let what my perceived beliefs of this person get in the way of the fact that he is a genuinely cool person? And it's like, that's where I feel like we should lean towards in this society as someone who's like not of the California mindset, but I can be a normal person and be like, well, maybe we should treat all people with respect from all credences, backgrounds and beliefs. And so, you know, I'm so glad that I have that impression on someone because I think that he has some of the coolest videos on YouTube. Um, his glitter bomb pranks are amazing. The sheer, oh God, what the fuck was that? The sheer disdain he has for Indian call centers is something that warms my heart every day. And the fact that Indian call centers send out hitmen to like try to detain Mark Rober and his friends in India was one of the craziest things ever. I hate Indian call centers and um, Mark Rober does too. So you know, at the end of at the end of the day, he's a he's a cool guy in my books. Also, I'm pretty sure he worked for NASA, right? Like that's what he was doing before he started making YouTube videos. So I don't know. That guy's a Chad, in my opinion. Um, but don't get me started about Good Mythical Morning. If you like Rhett and Link, I'm sorry. That's that's where I draw the line is Mark Rober. Um, I'm not a Good Mythical Morning person. Um, I'm sure they're cool guys, but they just scream to me. <laughs> they Okay, so this is again my, my mean spirit coming out, but Rhett and Link are the type of people that look like they really need to get punched in the face at least once a day. Um, and there are people like that out there. Like, I hate to say it, but let's all be real. Let's all be real. There are just some people out there. I might be one of them. Here, See, here's the thing. I'm neutral. I don't care if I'm one of them. But there are people out there who have faces that just beg to be punched. Like, I don't know what it is about some people... Maybe it's just me. No, it's not. No, it's absolutely not. I refuse to believe that I'm alone in this thought. I'm going to run into that same tree again. Um, but some people just have a very punchable face. And they... No, actually... So the movie Step Brothers... Um, what's that guy's name? The, the guy that's uh, his older brother... Or his younger brother's sort of employee. Um, but... Uh, he basically says, I want to punch you in the face. There's nothing you can do about it. I just want to punch you in your face. Um, but yeah, there are people like that out there. And I definitely feel that way. Not that I'd ever do it, because that's a crime. And you could get you could get charges pressed against you. See, here's the thing. I may like joke about a lot of this kind of stuff. But at the end of the day, I'm a fucking wet noodle when it comes to breaking the law. So... At the end of the day, when I joke about all this stuff, that's all they are. They're just jokes. Um, I'm doing what every other person who's failed medical school does and becomes a comedian. Um, and so, you know, when I say that I want to punch someone in the face, it's because they have a certain expression on their face where it feels like you're going to benefit maybe even more so than just benefit yourself. You're going to benefit the world for punching this person in the face. And that's how I feel about them. Um, nothing against Good Mythical Morning, but maybe not Maybe not the tall guy, but the short guy, the short guy is the one that I want to punch. The tall guy, he seems kind of cool, but he's also probably vegan or vegetarian. I'm not sure. That's just what they look like. And I'm not saying that you should judge people based on their appearances. But I'm also saying that I do that sometimes because you can't help it. Here's the thing. People want to say, don't judge a book by its covers. Well, how do you think people have survived out in the wild, out in nature for so long? Like, you can't tell somebody, don't judge a book by the covers when... Let's be real. Let's... Okay, let's be completely real. Let's be completely real. Um... Sorry, I'm reading what you have to say now. Microsoft tech support. Will Ferrell or John Riley? Who said it? It was, uh, no, it was Will Ferrell. It was Will Ferrell's character, because it was, I forget what the guy's name, I think it's like Rob something or other, but he's been in 
like Talladega Nights and some other movies too. They're all in the movies together, but he's like the one that's like, I'm gonna eat your dick like Kobayashi. <laughs> that guy. He, during the Catalina wine mixer, he goes to Will Ferrell's character, what was that, Brendan Huff? And he's like, there's just something about your face. I want to punch it real bad. And uh, he's like, well, what, what do you want me to do about it? He's like, there's nothing you can do about it. I just wanted to let you know that <clears throat> I just want to punch you in the face. Um, short guy is John Riley. Is that really his name? Or because now I'm getting confused because the actor in Step Brothers was John C. Riley. And what? They have the same name? Except they look nothing alike. John C. Riley's hair looks like a shower drain clogged. John C. Riley has disgusting hair. Um the guy from Good Mythical Morning I'm is the one I'm thinking of. Sorry. What am I talking about? I'm not talking about Step Brothers. I'm talking about how uh, the the short guy from Good Mythical Morning it has a very punchable face. And I was referencing Step Brothers because there was a scene where the guy says that. And so I'm thinking about people with punchable faces. And the short guy, the short guy from... Um, Good Mythical Morning has a very punchable face. He has got he's the one with the glasses and like the big hair that's always like combed upwards. Um anyways, the whole point of that was saying that Mark Rober is a cool guy. And I imagine people I guess it's it's me stereotyping, but I imagine people who watch Mark Rober also watch Good Mythical Morning. And so, the short guy in that, I don't know if it's Rhett or Link, but I don't watch it, so I wouldn't know. But he just has a very punchable face. And I was quoting Step Brothers, because they say that in that movie. Anyways, Step Brothers is a fantastic movie. It's one of the best cult classics that I grew up watching. Um, because, you know, people always talk about that. You know, movies that are cult classics within a generation... Obviously, for Zoomers, you guys got the Joker, which I'll let you guys take because it was a good movie, and all the Zoomers loved the Joker. Joaquin Phoenix playing the Joker. Um, but for my generation, like when I was a kid, Step Brothers was the shit, and it still holds up. It's a fantastic movie. It's irreverent. It's politically incorrect. Uh, Boats and Hose is a banger of a song. The Nina Hall Penta, the Santa Maria. I'll do you in the bottom on drinking sangria. Nachos, lemon heads, my dad's boat. We won't go down because my dick can't float. We sail around the world and we go to port to port. Every time I come, I produce a court. Something, something, and let's drop anchor. Run the buzz, I'd like to swank her. Boats and hoes, boats and hoes. Gotta get me some boats and hoes, boats and hoes boats and hoes. I gotta get me some boats and hoes. Yeah. Step Brothers is a good movie. Nearly perfect. When they're trying to like convince <laughs> they're trying to sabotage the brother from selling their house. They're like doing all these different things where it's like, oh, your neighbors are a Nazi and a, K K a Klux Ku Klux Klan member. And then the other one where it's like the black family and the <laughs> Will Ferrell's character is like painted blue and covered in ice in the bathtub and <laughs> he's pretending to be dead. But you can clearly see his eyes moving and him like breathing. Dude, that movie's so good. He rubs his nutsack on his drum set, says he's watching cops. Like, it's just a perfect movie. I, I wish. Tropic Thunder, cult classic. I love how people still talk about Tropic Thunder today because of Robert Downey Jr. doing that blackface in that movie. And I urge everyone who immediately dismisses that movie to watch it once because it's one of the most funny movies of that generation as well. Um, right there with Step Brothers. They're all in that same generation of like irreverent humor where 
they didn't take themselves super seriously like they do now. Like, I don't think... Okay. Real, real question. Real question. And I'm not just doing this because I'm politically incorrect and I'm doing it to meme on people, but... Has there been a funny movie in the past, like, eight years? Like, I don't know if anything after that generation has been as funny. Like what, Crazy Rich Asians? I've never seen that movie, but it looks stupid. Um, but has there been a comedy that has been as good as any of those since then? I feel like all of the comedies in the past, I don't know how long, have been just awful. And I hate to say it, but it's like comedians nowadays, they stopped caring about all the the saying the right things now and they've kind of gone back on doing it and maybe I'm just in the wrong bubble where I see those things and I'm like oh that's cool because I'm I'm sure there's a lot of reasonable people who don't like Dave Chappelle because of sort of how he's changed and they have good reasons for it but I'm of the opinion it's like oh it's Dave Chappelle being Dave Chappelle but anyways um, it does feel like comedy has kind of ever since people are like you can't do that anymore it seems like you just can't do comedy anymore. I don't know. The dead body, yeah. No, because everyone's so sensitive nowadays, and you have to make it where it's safe to put it out without being canceled. Speaking of which, that is a perfect segue for me to talk about how they're going to make a Snow White and the Seven Dwarves movie adaptation where the Seven Dwarves are multiple genders and heights, they're not even dwarves anymore. They're people of different heights, backgrounds, men, women, tall, short. We're not just gonna have seven dwarves. We're gonna have seven diverse people. And it's like, I'm not gonna steal Tim Dillon's bit that he did on his podcast uh, or the Tim Dillon show this earlier this week because he riffs on it so hard. And it's like, he talks about how the the uh the spy photos of the seven dwarves he just goes off on how they look like a a, a bunch of homeless heroin addicts from from seattle or portland penguin man woman a trans man trans woman a they and a clown self hey don't don't knock the clife style the clife style is is very real and honestly okay hot take people made fun of juggalos and 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 clown people back in the day but based on what we're kind of going through now we're okay so here's okay let's take take all of your prejudices out of this conversation right now because we're not trying to do this to be bombastic or say anything that's like hurtful to any of these groups but i'm going to say this very carefully i'm looking down because my webcam used to be down there um I'm going to say this. We're eventually going to get to the point of trans acceptance. People are going to stop bitching about trans rights like they stopped bitching about gay rights about a few years ago. People are okay with being gay now. And it used to not be the case. Just like how people are not okay with most people being trans right now. But we're going to figure out how to get along. I think we will. Um, because it's such a fucking prevalent issue in the United States that we're going to have to figure out how to get along at some point. Anyways, point being is... My prediction is we're going to get past trans people fighting for their rights. And what does that mean for furries, for other kins, for clown people? Um, I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I'm not saying it's a good thing either. I'm trying to be neutral here, but I'm just laying it down for you to say that it's not even a joke anymore to say that clown, the Clive style, is going to be a protected class of minority groups soon enough. Maybe not minority groups, because that's such a loaded term nowadays. Um, I'm a minority. I'm mixed. I'm Asian. I'm white. I'm Hispanic. It is what it is. But my point being is, we're going to get to the point where people are going to take that seriously. And it's a joke right now, but I think the Clive style is very real and very legitimate. Just like how other kin are going to be treated as fucking animals. Which I don't know. Okay, so here's my 
here's my irrational thought. My intrusive thought is if we give other kin the right to be considered animals, if I shoot them, is that considered murder? Well, according to PETA, yeah, it would be because animals are people too. But if we're going to give them the rights, because here's the thing. PETA don't run the government, Sally. Oh, you got an ad. All right. Well, we'll 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 get back to what we're talking about. We'll have a quick little ADHD break here. And what do I do here? History of speed. I need nine more points. Two, four, six, nine. Trade colors as these tiny bugs menace the road. Okay, I think I can do that. Volkswagen. Beetle. Herbie. Fully loaded. We got 20 seconds for the ad to finish. Yes, have the car delivered to me. We gotta trade some paint here. All right. All right, welcome back. Um, so I was just saying that if we gave other kin the right to be considered animals, does that mean if you shot one, that would be considered murder? Like, that's the problem. The problem is not that I don't want to give people the benefit of the doubt and give them happiness. It's not that, okay, here's the thing. It's not that people don't want you to be happy. It's that you got to understand if you really want to be an other kin, that means that it's technically not a crime to shoot you. No, it's an animal. Exactly. That's the whole problem. And that's where this argument is going to lead to whether or not you want to say that it's a slippery slope fallacy to say that that's where we're going to lead to. I don't. Okay. Okay. I, it's not even controversial. I don't think I'm like cycling through my head. Oh, people are going to think you're being offensive right now. Cause you're saying that if we give trans people rights, then we're going to start giving, we're going to start shooting, shooting other kin just for the sake of shooting them for being animals. And I'm not saying that trans people are going to lead to that happening. I'm saying that the people who are fucking psychopaths and who are trying to like push an idea more than reason, like I'm saying being reasonable. I, I feel like everyone deserves some sort of respect if it's reasonable, right? That That's the whole thing is like, is it reasonable? Is it reasonable? That's the only question I ask. And apparently that makes me either a super fucking right winged alt-right conservative at times but then if i hold it for some other opinion like uh legalizing okay i'm a californian legalize marijuana federally i don't fucking care anymore just do it um it's the dumbest thing ever alcohol is so fucking terrible i drink it from time to time but it's like i don't know there's so many reasons why it's so stupid but anyways um that's just me being a californian um point being though is yeah, that's what we don't want to happen. We don't want people to shoot fucking people and get away with it because it's legal. That's the problem. It's not whether it's moral. And that's where a lot of people kind of get fucking pissy and start, you know, puffing their chest out. Sorry, this car is really loud. They start puffing their chest out because they're like, well, it's not about what's legal, it's about what's morally right. And it's like, who the fuck are you to decide what's morally right? Earlier we were talking about how opinions are the dumbest thing ever because everyone's got them and no one is going to, you know, everyone just wants to be right. And so, at the end of the day, it's, it's not so much a matter of, sorry, I'm trying to get this challenge done too. I don't know what I have to do. Trading paint. 
treasure clue. Sting like a beetle. Trade colors as these tiny bugs menace the road. Well, there's one right there. Um, but it's like, let's just be reasonable. Because we're not gonna we're not gonna tell an animal person that they're an animal and then someone's gonna get legally caught up in a battle of well they were technically a fox spirit so when the guy shot him with a 12 gauge yeah he probably should have used bird shot considering it's a fox but technically there's no law against hunting foxes with 12 gauge slugs um, as you're looking at an autopsy of a guy with a big circle in his face um, but then also has a fucking fox butt plug or whatever. Sorry, I don't know how the other kins live their lives. Um, but the thing is, we're already on the path of accepting them. So, what I'm saying is not so much like, well, we shouldn't do this because that's what's going to happen. I'm saying it's already going to happen. And just look forward to fucking mystery meet at the dinner table this year uh kiddos uh i don't know i just feel like it's sort of inevitable inevitable excuse me sort of inevitable in regards to like not so much that i think like i said earlier i don't think it's because we're in this whole thing with trans people that we're going to have other kin get shot by hunters i'm not saying that's the direct cause i'm just saying we're accepting things without reason um and i'm not talking about trans people i'm just saying that it's not related to that because people are going to think it is because that's what's going on right now because that's a current event i'm not i don't think about current events because they're all stupid current events are all just happenings and if you've been on my channel long enough you'll know that i i get into a rant about happenings and say how comfy they are um because nothing ever happens and nothing ever will um and i know i'm wrong about that and it's like well you're wrong about it. We're actually going to blow each other up and we're all going to die. It's like, oh, great. How much does that change my life right now? Now that I know that we're all going to blow each other up, or now that the sun is going to swallow all the water dry and we're all going to burn up, um, how does that change the fact that I owe, you know, this much money on the 31st for rent? So, you know, diving into that reality is what kind of grounds me. And a lot of this stuff. I'm still someone who thinks long term and about things much more uh, professionally or, or in an educated manner or something that takes into term uh, or takes into consideration long term planning. But at the end of the day, most of these issues can be boiled down to that sentiment. It's like, how does it affect me? And it's like, yeah, you want to work for the greater good, but at the same time, how much of it is going to make a difference in your life? And it's like, well, I'm doing this for the greater good. It's like, okay, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I'm, I'm doing it for the good of being good. But other than that, you know, it's like, dude, I got problems in my life. <laughs> and that's why I'm doing what I'm doing right now is not because... I'm better than anyone else. It's because, well, it's a rough world out there, and I'm I'm over judging people into being like, you need to change your life. But I do that from time to time. I still do that anyways, which is the crazy thing. Is like I say that, but then sometimes I act in the exact opposite way because I think the main difference is. I need to move to New Hampshire so that I don't have to be around people anymore. And I think that my problem is I like people when they're not in my face. Because all of these people that I don't really care about, how they live their life, it's like what we were talking about with bugs. Like, I love insects and studying them, and entomology is a really cool field, but I don't want to be near insects. I don't want to be near bugs. I want to see them from a distance or at a confined space where I control them, um, or that I, I can be safely away from them. It's like that with people too. You know, it's just a matter of, I don't care what you do with your life. The closer the proximity is to mine, the more it 
it makes me have a reaction to it where I have personal investment in what I want to see happen. And that's the problem. That's 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 something that that you constantly have to struggle with. Six more points. What are we going to do six points with? All three of these, the danger sign, the trailblazer and the drift zone. I don't think I can do the drift zone. Um, anything goes for all three of them. That is a OK. What is this one? I'm just going to have to pop out the uh, I forget what it's called. Um, what is it called? The Hoonigan Kazi, right? No, not Hot Wheels. Where are you? There she is. Red Bull Kazi. Shout out to Hoonigan for being another based uh, company, whatever you want to call them. They're just, they're just bros, you know? I can appreciate people who don't really give a shit about anything except what they like. You have arrived at your destination. Because too many people get obsessed with what people don't like. Because we've taught people to be like, well, you know, all of that is because it's important to know what you don't like as much as what you do like. And it's like, yeah, but that's basically like empty calories. It's like eating ice chips. It's finding out what you don't like. As much as I agree with that sentiment, it's like, well, it's good to know what you don't like too. As much as I agree with that sentiment, it's like the most empty, like not even calories. They're just like ice chips. It's Splenda for your life. Just like some artificial sweetener. Because it's like not that impressive to know what you don't like. Because I hate a lot of things. And I have a book that I'm going to read after I get all 40 points. That will showcase a thousand things to be miserable about. And so, at least a thousand things. I think it might be more than that. But um, it's just a great book because it talks about just awful things in the world. Oh, let's see how this is. 157. That's not enough. I need 50 more feet than that. But yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, it's what you like that really defines you, not what you hate. So, people need to stop getting so focused on all the stuff that they hate. There we go. Ah, oh, this thing's got too much grip. I don't think it can do the drift zones. We'll have to figure it out. What's my highest danger sign? Good question. Thanks for asking. Um, What is my highest danger sign? That's a great question. I feel like I have one that's pretty good. I'm not sure. Let's see. View accolades. Nope. Let's see. Oh, my gosh. I don't know the controls of my steering wheel so I don't know what button five is we page down there we go. all danger signs see but this game is like Mario Party where everyone just hacks for the high score ah how do I what is fast travel there we go view leaderboard 186,000. What is this one? 20, oh, 600,000. Front lettuce with the Diablo, nice. Maybe that's a one worth trying. Yeah, front lettuce has probably a lot of high scores. A tier, let's go. 
WRX, 1 million. Not very good on any of these. 900 tier, nice. Hoonigan got... What is this one? 860 feet. I think I have like a really high one for this one. Oh yeah, look at that one. Boom, 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 boom. I don't know how I got that. <laughs> Let's go. That's my highest danger sign in a 800 tuned Mitsubishi Starion ESIR. You're going to first and foremost say that I was hacking. I was not. I have no idea how I got this. And it's not even. Look at that. I'm only in top 17% with that. Wait, change filter. Global. Oh, I'm in the top 1% actually. Of 7 million people. Is that really a 1%er one? Oh, there we go. Yeah, top 1%. Sheesh. Yours is 2560. Nice. Yeah, I have no idea how I got this one. I must have either did a... I don't know. I definitely didn't do an exploit. Because I don't remember doing a jump in the Starion. I mean, we can hop in that for now. Just to... Until we figure out what we're doing next. But um, I do not remember doing that. Because the only thing I can think of is if I was in a party with someone. But that doesn't even make sense. Because even if someone hit me, there's no way that it would have launched me that hard. Even a car by itself would be able to do that. My fastest car is just whatever the Chevy 150 is, I think. That thing's a piece of shit, but it goes so fast. Um, what was I looking for? Oh yeah, the Mitsubishi. Where's my world beater Starion? Let's get in this. People are going to think I'm a hacker. Here's the Jera. Um, let me see what my fastest is. Let's go to change filter, change filter. What's button five? What do you think button five is? I found it. Um, what is my fastest time on this speed trap? 292 in the Evil Yaw. Oh no, the I had the Yesco. Yeah, the Evil Yaw is pretty fast. 334. Sheesh. The, uh, welcome edition of the Taycon S is also really fast. The Yesco is really fast. Yeah, the way you get the highest top speed is like you manipulate with it by drafting someone and then adjusting the the final gear ratio at the very end. Once you're able to like go fast enough and then you can just infinitely have gear changing upward. Hitchables just bought an Audi e-tron. There you go. Nice. The future is electric until we run out of coal factories. How's it going, dude? Um, I was also curious, uh, you said you, you hit a nice new rank in support there, Hitchables. I was curious to who you were playing. Cause I, I finished recording my, my tier list and I just absolutely dumped on mercy. I just hate mercies in every one of my games and they are all terrible. So mercy, I put, I think in D tier, cause only if you're a one trick, well, I'll be satisfied with you playing mercy in overwatch right now. Um, but yeah, the e-tron's pretty cool too, but it didn't, it didn't get a, a record here. Um, I don't know how I did this. Oh, I also have a gift. We'll collect the gift and then do the last six points here, four points. But apparently I, I got some crazy high score on this because, uh, yeah, I mean, 6,000, that's double the Kona Yesco. Crazy. Um, Turn around when it so you need, ouch. Get yourself a Mitsubishi Starion. This thing's where the real power's at. Can jump over a mile. Oh shit. But yeah. Alright, Envy, thank you so much for hopping by. It was fun talking with you. But yeah, no, I'm I'm serious. You're gonna have to look out for other kins out there. And people having to respect their species of preference. 
Um, you did it on Moira and Bap. Hell yeah, dude. I feel like Moira is... It's like the nuclear option, you know what I mean? People are so bad at countering Moira. Like, I... Here's the thing. I can play Mercy to the level of a Moira. Like, in terms of being really hard to kill. But... I just play Moira if I want to do that. Because you can do infinitely more damage and people just immediately... Like... They suddenly have a minus 10 defense, like, debuff applied to them when they have a Mercy in the lobby, and it's like... Moira's the nuclear option, where... Um... It's like... Two, two ways you can do it. You can do, in case of emergency, break glass, and it's just the Moira one trick. And then, you could do it the other way, where it's like... I'm not gonna swap off Moira until you make me. And... The second one is my favorite option because it just assumes that people are bad at the game. And the problem with that is it's true, people are bad at the game. But also at the same time, like, come on. You're not gonna <laughs> you're not gonna be able to beat a, a Moira, then you're you're pretty bad. And it's like, once you can, you can swap off, and then BAP is just... So BAP is at the top of S tier. Here, let's 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 do a quick little aside. I want to show you before you head out, because it's, um, it's really important to see where all of this fits on the, uh, on the, the tier list, because I think I did a good job this, this tier list. I, I want to say my, my beginning of the season one was absolutely a meme because I put Widow in F tier and I like joked about it during the, the video saying that Widow was F tier but in reality she was actually just slightly worse and so I I think you'll like this tier list when it comes out. Um, Ramatra I was like I feel like he was already at the top of S tier at the beginning of the season but then giving him the ability to uh, do his vortex through enemies now it doesn't clip on them anymore is just another buff to an already broken character and so I originally put him at the top in front of the supports instead of just at the top of the tank area uh, and I was like okay well I do need to give him his own tier so I put him up there um, as far as supports go yeah I, I would say BAP is just like is just the best of like the tryhards like I would say these are the tryhard characters if you really want to like optimize a team comp and then Ana, I would say she's up there, but I've seen a lot of bad Anas this season, like a lot of bad Anas, like some of the worst Anas I've ever seen in my entire life. Season five, check them out. They're going to be on the low ground of Junkertown getting dove on by a Roadhog. You doubt me, but wait till you see my casting videos where I shout cast over myself getting dunked on by a Roadhog because our Ana is just stuck on the low ground while everyone is just dropping their pants from above and taking a dump on her. But uh, that's the only reason why Ana's in A tier. Because it's just too much of a skill issue. <laughs> Whereas these ones, you can still kind of cheese your way out of it. Um, obviously, these situational picks are largely dependent on what map and what composition you're running. But yeah, no, I mean... The Jay Silly, I feel like he's falling out of favor just because Echo is kind of getting dirty playtime right now. But anyways, um, it's it's interesting that your your support picks were so on the nose with what I feel like is really strong right now. Because Moira, okay, here's the here's the hot take. One, she's using the Overwatch League, so she's actually meta. Two, people use her up in top five hundred too. Three, everyone complains that at low tiers, she cheeses people, which is also true. So it's like, when are we going to stop saying Moira is like brain dead, low skill, um, just one dimensional when she is so ubiquitous in all of the ranks? Like, I, I don't get it. It's kind of ridiculous. I'm a huge Moira shell because as much as people talk about how boring her kit is, I think she's... It's the Marge Simpson meme where it's just like, I think they're, I just think they're neat. And it's like, that's how I feel about Moira. Or it's like, I don't really care that she's super one dimensional. Like, wow, that's no one tell, talks about well, Mercy that way, but horizon, that's how it? I feel about her. Shall we send a thank you? 
You feel like you just played support in so long that you had to try more again and she was busted. Oh, we got the Barbie Corvette. Let's go. I'll say thank you. The Barbie Corvette is banned from open top racing because uh, I guess that would mean implicitly that nipples are being shown or something. Um, that's a joke. It's a glitch. It's not actually supposed to be banned for the open top racing circuit, but it is. You can only use the regular Corvette. The man Corvette. Not the Barbie Corvette. Okay, what were we doing? We just got that thingy. You hadn't played in so long. Yeah, I know. You Honestly, I wish I... Actually, no. I freaking love playing that game. <laughs> I'm like thinking to myself, I'm almost done with the battle pass, and I'm like... Do I regret playing that much? Not really. I've been having such an awful comp season, but like it's it becomes like you're the Joker where I used to think my life was a tragedy. <laughs> but now I learned it's a comedy <laughs> as my SR is just tanking so fucking hard this season. It's worse than season two hog meta, um, which was what previously my worst season in Overwatch ever. And then this season was like, hold my beer, and I've been, I'm almost in gold on tank. I'm definitely, no, I'm not. I'm like mid-plat right now, but I've dropped three tiers. Let's just say that. So I went from diamond to plat, and I've been dropping. And I'm like, dude, what is going on here? And then I look in every game, and it's in a mercy, and then in Ana. That's my comp. That's the dream comp for UngoCast. The dream comp for UngoCast is is a Mercy Ana where the Ana refuses to take the free high grounds. Like, yeah, we get it. You can't jump up there, but there was a staircase five feet behind you that you could have taken so you got better positioning. And then we get the Mercy that's going to go for res every single time in the beginning of the fight. Right in front of the Zarya that just got 80 charge on the first push. And it's like... Are we really doing this again? The Ungo cast comp on a mercy? Blah, blah, blah. Ooh, that gives me like real shibbies. That's that's those are some Oh my god, dude. That is actually giving me like a orgasm how many chills I got from thinking about fucking on a mercy on my team. Jesus Christ, dude. That was a revelationary feeling right there. Um I I wish I was in Masters, not because I think I'm in Masters, but because I fucking hate off rolls that are shit. Like my my plat games right now have been filled with gold and below supports. Just straight up gold and below supports every single time. And I'm like, dude, I would take a gold tank. Honestly, tank is the most fucking underrated role in the game. And I'm not just saying that because I'm coping over the fact that I've dropped out of diamond. Um, but it's just the hardest role in the game. And it it's just so unfair being a tank, honestly. Um, but that being said, <laughs> I'll take a gold tank over gold supports any day of the week. I'll take... I'll take fucking gold DPS over gold supports sometimes. That one's a little iffy, but... Honestly, if I could have a ma like a Masters Diamond Plat lobby, it would be Master Supports Diamond DPS and Plat Tank. That's literally my perfect comp. Like that's if I get those games in ranked, I win those every time. Cuz the only time I lose those is if I get hog diffed cuz my hog is hella rusty and I never get to play it or I get canceled by what is my worst what matchup I would say hog like a hog diff against me is so annoying Winston diffs are annoying too because my Winston is really good I just got gold for that um, and that's another nice thing about me playing a lot now is that I can finally start grinding all the gold guns and comp yards. this is such a good Forza edition car it's one of the best ones in the game um, but yeah, so I've been enjoying the game. I think people have just turned off their brain this season for whatever reason, and it's kind of frustrating, but 
I'm not mad. It's okay, I'll climb back another season. I've given up on trying to, like, say that I'm a certain rank and trying to get there. Because at the end of the day, I'm like, whatever. Whatever. I still think I'm better, but... Personal Bex 46. Oh, I need a second and a half? What the heck? The heck? Ads, 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 everybody. I have no idea how I got that Mitsubishi Starion one. That thing was crazy. I need to shave a second and a half. Turn around. Is this the right car to do it though? Or do I want like the Huracan? This thing is pretty freaking good, dude. I mean, there's not a lot of things that'll really cause issues. I mean, they're both all wheel drive too. We'll try the Sesto. We'll just do a hot lap on both of them as our first run. And we'll see what the better initial time is. Cause if it's, So if it's just like an immediate improvement, then, you know, we don't even have to do it again. There we go. Did we do it that time? Top 25%. Wait, what? Oh, we already did it. Oh, we did it the first time. Lol. I'm an idiot. It's just the drift zone now. DPS at Masters. Dude, I wish I was good at DPS. I'm only good at tank, and I will never climb out of diamond because tank is so fucking hard to climb out of. I'm just so bad now. I'm not bad. It's just so hard. It's just so hard. I see because the reason I say I'm bad is because the only mindset I have at this point is literally just, well, if you don't carry the game, then how can you really say it's not your fault? You know what I mean? Like, I'm at the point where it's just like I've played this game so long and I know where I can get to. It's just I've stopped trying to lie to myself like I need to just reset my rank and smurf because I probably could hit diamond. I don't know. That's a social experiment that I'm not really willing to test out. But, uh, maybe I'd hit diamond if I smurfed. But I just want to get my main account to that shit. I don't care about my rank like that much. I just don't want people to think I'm bad. Oh god, this is the drift zone that I cannot do with the steering wheel. This is one of the hardest drift zones for me on the steering wheel. Especially in the Hoonicorn. Oh no, we have this. That's a, this is a really good drift zone run we're having right now. There we go. Oh no, too much, too much, too much. We didn't, we're not slipping enough, that's the problem. Oh my god. I'm so bad at drifting too. Yes, I know I'm bad at everything in this game. Don't need to rub it in my face. Whoa. You have 127. 46, 42 more thousand. How much do I need? I'd rather just do the arcade mode than that. 
What? How much do I need? 170. Oh, I was so close. I only needed 3,000 more. Hundred seventy. We got this. Oh, too much, too much, too much, too much. Too, too much. Oh, come on. We got to get 170 out of this last turn here. So, we got to really hoon. Ah. What can I do here? I think I have to re-enter this turn. Ah, too much, too much, too much. Okay, we need to go. We're Goldilocks right now. We need to go right in between what we did before and now. Ah, definitely better the other way. I think we can do it. This thing is so easy to drift in, honestly. It's so balanced. I love it. Oh, come on. Too much. See, the problem is, it looks like I just fucking went at it too fast but there's a bump right there that makes it really hard to whoa judge how much speed to enter the turn from and i'm not good at drifting so it's hard for me to discern that all right that was a pretty good little run there we're gonna try to keep this combo going though oh god Ah, I changed the view on accident. Ah, too much, too much, too much. I think we can get 170 on this run. Oh my god, we fucked up there. No, 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 no. We got 170 on this one, for sure. I just need to stop messing around here. Oh my god, what am I doing? Why did I do that? I knew I wasn't going to get it. Alright, let's try the Subaru. Let us try the Subaru. Let us try the Subaru. See, I've mind melded like an avatar creature with my Subaru, so I will actually get a better score than before. Believe it or not. Believe it or not, Ripley. Try it in third person because this car is so goddamn pretty.
Oh my god, it's got so much grip right now. Oh my god. Oh my god, we're gonna hit that tree. This is bad. I don't know. This thing might be too grippy. I have an idea. I have an idea. I have an idea for this thing. We're gonna create a new build. Because that's way too grippy. That was actually like really good handling. Make sure that's saved over my um, S1 street. Now do I have... Uh... Wait, do I have a drift one? The 2.5 beefcake? Interesting. All right, only difference we're gonna do is put drift tires on it. And give it a drift suspension, maybe? All right, if you ain't out of control, you ain't in control. All right, all right. We gotta warm up to her first. Now that she's a, a stance little girl, little squatty girl. So handling is a bit of an issue for her, but that's okay. I'm just going too fast. There we go, okay. Alright, let's just do a hot run while we're feeling it. Turn left. Oh, I couldn't swing out enough there. It's got too much grip. Oh my god. This is a pretty good run. One thirty. Turn around. When it's Not bad.
Oh my god, that was horrible. That was awful. I was doing so well and then I started minging it right there. Right there is where I started minging it. Yeah. Yeah, it's because I'm way over on the wrong side of that turn. I need to be on the right side. Okay, 145. We're gonna turn this thing into an absolute drift monster. So, we gotta do it to him. Put the arrow on the front, remove that, the flaps. Go with that. Yes. Yes. We go with, go with the engine swamp. Flat six, dude. The world is flat, though. Now we get to max this bad doggy out. Um, boom. Oh, did we forget the twin turbos? You squeeze me. You squeeze me. I forgot to bail the uh, twin turbos. That would make a difference. Nine hundred fifty-seven horsepower. First, first. That's gonna be pretty good. That's going to be pretty good. Alright, what are we topping out here? At? Ooh, damn. Spicy. Spicy horsepower with this thing now. In 100 yards, turn right. <laughs> that was kind of cool, wasn't it? Whoa, okay. Things are a little bit more squirrely than I remember them being. You have to counter steer on everything, pretty much. Got a traffic jam here. Turn sharp left. Turn left. 
Ah, come on. That's yeah, walking the line of uh, almost losing control there. Ooh, that tree stopped me immediately. That was a near miss. Okay, we literally are one turn away from hitting 170. I just have to hit this last drift pretty well. And I'm coming at it way too hot, so I need to fix this angle here. Damn it. I tried to finish it thinking I'd get it, but I messed up there. That was a really good run, too, and I just fucked up the end. Whatever. We got it. We should be able to get it. Okay, I need to let it go sooner. Alright, alright, 15,000 under that time. Yeah, it was the beginning. I wasn't doing too hot in the beginning, but I think I can get it if I simply just get used to first person now, because I actually got kind of used to the... the. Um... Also, I need to be online now. Honestly, the fucking amount of cars in offline is annoying when you're trying to avoid cars. Okay. <laughs> that hump, that bump is really the main problem here. Oh, I remember this drift being like holy diamonds fucking just ripping it because I have to like hit it at a certain angle that I'm 
not even ready for. And I'm not getting any points for that because I wasn't in the zone. Just sad because I think I can do it. And I failed the drift zone. That's cool. The V8 might honestly also be pretty good here too. Ah, oh, come on. <laughs> I mean, I can milk hella points out of this turn. I just need to take it at a serious angle. All these angles I'm at right now are just... Something more respectable like that. That was a bit more respectable, but I need to straighten out with enough time. You have arrived at your destination. Okay, we got this, we got this. It's just we're shitting the bed in the midsections. The beginning we can just fly through, get a really good initial um, thing for that, but Oh, come on. I have to turn it faster there. We can get it on this one. I have a good feeling about it. We just need to straighten out here. This is bad. Ooh, we're getting it. We're getting it. I think this is it. No, that's not it. See, that wasn't it. I shouldn't commit to bad posture. It's right here where it has to be perfect. Oh, we're so close. We're so close. No, we're not going to cancel that. No! God damn it, dude. I don't even know where the fucking end is. 
because it just gets so disintegrated. That was so close. That was the run. All right. We're starting to get a little fatigued here. Okay, so we need like at least 140 when we're going into that final stretch. See, I want to get at least like 130 on that midpoint big left turn. And I think I can. 130. We just have to do big here. Which is pretty easy now. Oh my god, unless I overshoot it like that. Yikes. There's the 130 I asked for. There it is. Oh. <laughs> My new drift car. Jesus Christ. There it is. Wow. That took a minute. Woo! All right, we gotta save that as the drifteroo. Do. Drifteroo STI. There it is. Nice, we did it. This is kind of wild. Oh my god. I mean, yeah, this thing's going way faster than it needs to be. I mean, this thing's a drifter. It's not even 
stable at these high of speeds. It's not meant to be. Because we drift in here. Drift in that 207. That's pretty sketch, isn't it? I mean, this thing's not really meant to go this fast. The problem. But it can drift like a mofo. Do the treasure chest. We already did. Alright, we gotta find a skill song here. Screw the copyright. Oh, too late. Turn around when it is safe to do so. Whatever. Alrighty, well, that's going to be it for today. Thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in. I had a lot of fun there, but I'm going to go ahead and hit the hay here. But, uh, you know, as always, stay free, stay bold. It's Forza Horizon for young and old. <laughs> Anyways, what was the title of this? Clankas in Paris. Nice. Anyways, I will see you all later, and don't forget to wipe.